In this tutorial, we will perform an inertia relief analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This type of analysis is usually performed on parts and assemblies which are not fixed at any point in space. For example, ships, automobile suspension systems and also aerospace components. We will perform inertia relief analysis on a satellite sub-assembly to evaluate the deformation and stress contours produced due to inertia. The sub-assembly will not be constrained at any location. The resulting deformation and stress plots are due to the internal resisting forces caused by inertia. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the inertia relief setup process. The first step is to create a material and property for the satellite sub-assembly components. Let's take a look at how this is done. The geometry is divided into two components, the frame and the panels. Let's start by creating a new material. Provide a name to it. High grade aluminum is commonly used material to manufacture satellite components. We will enter the material properties for aluminum in units Newton, Millimeter, Ton, Second. Create a new property and provide a name to it. As we are using solid components, change the card image to P solid. Assign the aluminum material in material selection box. We will assign this property to both the components. Select the two components and assign the solid property in proper selection box. The material gets assigned automatically. Now open the Tetra tool from mesh ribbon. Keep the entity selector on solids. In the settings, Set maximum size to 10. We will turn on curvature based mesh refinement. In advanced settings, change mesh destination to original component. Now select the three solids. Create the mesh. Once the meshing is done, exit the tetra tool. Let's hide the geometry and show only the elements. Create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. In the model ribbon, select the RBE2 tool. Set dependent field to faces. Now select the internal face of the frame. Make sure that all degrees of freedom are selected. Create the rigid element. Now open the contact browser from model ribbon. We will create a tied contact between the frame and panel components. Select the two components and right click. Select the auto contact option. Set proximity tolerance to 5. Change the contact type to tie. Now create the contact. We can see that one contact and two contact surface groups are automatically created. We can review this contact to check the master and slave surface assignments. This contact is defined as required. Let's switch back to model browser. Create a new load collector for force. From the analyze ribbon, open the apply force tool. 
Select the master node of the rigid element. We will apply a force of magnitude 2000 Newton in positive z direction. Create the force load. The force vector is visible in the graphics window. Now create a new load step to specify linear static inertia relief analysis. In the load field, select the force load collector. To define the inertia relief analysis, we need to specify additional run parameters. Firstly, check the box next to check L and set it to no to skip element quality check during solver run. Enable the in-rel option and set it to minus 2 to define inertia relief with automatic support constraints. To extract specific results for post-processing, add the global output request card to the setup. We will output the contact force results in H3D format. Do the same for displacement results. Let's also output the strain results in H3D format. Also select stress and set format to H3D. In the option, select all. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's export the solver in FEM file format. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while specifying all file names to avoid any errors in the solver run. Set export options to all and complete the export. We will use the compute console to run this analysis. In the input field, select the FEM file we exported in previous step. Let's define some run settings. We will allot 6 cores for this run. Select the out option for real-time solver output during the run. Apply the selected options. Click on run to launch the OptiStruct solver. This may take some time to solve. Once the run is complete, we can view the results. Create a new page for post-processing. The client will be set to Hyperview by default. Let's use the Open File option to open the H3D file from working directory. Apply the results. Open the contour tab and apply displacement results. Let's hide the results component for better visualization of other components. We can see the displacement contours on the components produced due to inertia relief analysis. We can play the animation and adjust the frame rate to visualize the deformation of the satellite subassembly. Similarly, we can view stress results. Set averaging method to simple and apply the results. The stress contours are now visible. The contact force results can be applied to check the forces generated at contact locations. 
We have successfully performed an inertia relief analysis and evaluated the stress and displacements produced due to action of internal resisting forces of satellite subassembly. And this is how we can perform inertia relief analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.